welcome back. In this episode, we will be taking a 666 mile overhead view of Sun Tzu's Art of War. And then we will break that down into a basic template that we can use in our daily life to help us with our strategic thinking. Now, I'm gonna post these on my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. And uh, how you read these is clockwise out to in. And the top is actually the last. So one o'clock out to in. So Santa's is Art of War, the review. First of all, I've read this many, many, many fucking times. I don't even have a clue. I know I've written it out like five times at least. And uh, I've read it out loud for you in some earlier videos. Um, it's old, uh, fuck. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going off the top of my head here. So the first chapter, Land Plans, uh, we appraise five fundamentals. They are the moral law, the weather, and time, so heaven, uh, the terrain, which is earth, the command and commander, and uh, the organization, the method and discipline. Um, and he describes it. We're just going to do a quick overview, just do some points, you know. Uh, that's all I got written down, so. Uh, we're told to deliberate, deliberate or compare who has the most moral influence, who has the best command of ability, who has the advantage of time and space or heaven and earth, uh, who has more enforced discipline, whose army is stronger, whose training level is higher, whose consistency in reward and punishment. Um, I think that's mood. But mood is kind of moral and influence, so... Obedience, maybe? Who's more obedient army? He also talks about in the chapter on lame plans that all war is based on deception. Speed is the essence of war and hold out baits to entice. And later on he'll describe different definitions of what a bait is. Um, all warfare is based on distraction. That's not really going to be a motto we take to our strategic approach. You know, everybody works together and trusts each other. That's why money has value, and um, we're, we're not going to go down that road. Um, so, wage and war is chapter two. He says there's no benefits of prolonged warfare, and that cleverness is not associated with long delays. Use the conquered foe to augment one's own strength. Forage on the enemy. An army at a distance. Your army at a distance makes the costs go up for you. But any army nearby also makes the prices go up for you. So it's expensive. You know, uh, you got to rouse your men to anger to have the for the advantage of wanting to kill. And uh, you got to reward victory. Yep. Um, so attack by stratagem is chapter three. Uh, it's best to take hole in attack to break resistance without fighting, and its worst policy is to destroy. That's, I guess, a relief, right? Yeah. On some level, there's death and destruction is not the ultimate goal. That's Sun Tzu. It's an art of war. There's 2,000 year old trees that, you know, I've heard that some of the seals still carry it in their pocket to this day, you know? That this thing is saying that killing's not the best option. Uh, he also says that you have a high priority uh, to stop the enemy's plans, stop them from joining forces with like allies and stuff. Uh, you don't want, necessarily want to attack their army. It's not that great of a policy and it's even worse to attack walled cities. Um, he gives you some uh, numbers there where it's 10 to one you want to surround, five to one attack, two to one divide. If equal, you can battle. If a little bit less, you should avoid, and if inferior in every way, you should run away. Uh, 
A smaller force can often battle, but in the end you're going to need a bigger force to capture. Um, talks about the misfortunes of a general, uh, making commands of being ignorant of uh, the inability to move forward or back, and he also says uh, number two is ignorant of the conditions or the situation the army's in, and then number three is employment without discrimination, you know, just putting whoever in charge of whatever. Uh, it talks about the five essentials for victory, knowing when to fight and when not to fight, how to handle large and small forces, um, a united spirit consistent throughout the ranks so everybody's behind the purpose, uh, lays in wait for an enemy that kind of arrives. So he's almost saying that if you have to travel, you're gonna lose. You want you want the enemy to come to you. And then has the capacity and freedom to attack without the man getting in the way. Chapter four, tactical dis dispositions. Uh, he says, prepare and wait, make no mistakes. Defense is underground or low and offense is high or attacking from high to low. Um, he talks about uh, the enemy provides the opportunity to feed itself. So it's not so much about what you do as much as about what the enemy does that determines how you, you take it down. Uh, talks about earth, the environment and distances give rise to measurements, which goes to estimations, to your calculations, to your balances of chances. And uh, only if that says that you'll be victorious should you make a move. Chapter 5, Energy, he says, Institute signs and signals, use direct and indirect together, be bold and quick and deceitful. Uh, um, sacrifice is a bait, pick the right people for ta the task. Chapter 6, Weak Points and Strong, uh, he says, Arrive first, you'll be ready. Arrive second, you'll be on tired because you just spent all your time traveling to get there and uh, it's on when you get there so you're not ready for it. Um, force, you want to force your opponent to do the opposite. If they're camping, you want to make a move. If they're at ease, you want to harass them. If they're full, you want to starve them. Make them do what you want to do, which is whatever they don't want to do. Uh, attack places they must defend. Plan, discover their plans and their conditions. Concentrate your attack on a dispersed defense, basically. So you, you want to make them have to prepare against everywhere and be spread all out and then you just want to come in and be in one spot real quick and sneaky like and you don't want to attack their whole army you just want that one little piece right there and then attack another little piece over there and a little another little piece over there and like chain mail one little step at a time you'll uh, create something memorable, I guess. It basically comes down to letting the circumstance divide, decide the tactic, avoid the strong and attack in the weak. Chapter seven says use deception, the art of deviation. Uh, discipline and unity, he says is an advantage. Uh, don't force your marches, he does some examples of this and there's a few of them as to why you shouldn't uh, force your guys to do what they can't really do. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get that fucking prize. Um, he wants you to move rapid and compact. Uh, you have to reward your troops. Plan first, then move. Use signs and, signs and uh, flags or flags and sounds, like drums. In the morning, people are keen, noon, people smooth sway in the evening, they're tired, attack basically in the evening and avoid them in the morning. Don't chase the fleeing, leave an escape. Basically saying that that's bait. Don't even play that game. Let them get away, you got your victory. 
Uh, chat 3, Variation and Tactics. Five faults of a general is recklessness, which leads to destruction. Cowardice leads to capture. Haste leads to uh, being easily provoked. Uh, honor leads you to being easily shamed. And uh, compassion leads you to... Uh, exposes you to too many worries and troubles and troubles that really shouldn't distract you from your priority which is essentially keeping your entire nation safe you want to be ready to seize any advantage you want to know your country and be flexible with your plans you want to consider advantage and disadvantage in your plans uh he talks of some five advantages and the going the going answer for that is roads, armies, towns, positions, and commands to avoid. Um, I'm working on something on that when it's ready. I'm sure I'll do a video, but I, I I have an idea I've been rolling with, and when I frame it as right or wrong, it kind of works for both, so I'm not too sure on it yet. I'm still working some stuff out. But I can talk about that in another video someday. Uh, so he talks a bit about ground that he also mentions in a later chapter exactly basically the same way it's in there twice so I'll just mention it in the chapter 11 when it comes up again instead of here because chapter 11 has the whole thing this just has uh, five examples so the next chapter is chapter 9 the army on the march it says pass quick and camp high in the sunny sides uh, when an army's crossing a river, don't attack them like on the other side of the river and have to do battle in the river. Don't attack them when they first get across. Don't let them get all the way across. Attack them when they're halfway across. And uh, avoid dangers, but maneuver dangerous ground, but maneuver the enemy there or they're back to there. Uh, tells you some ways to spot some ambushes through the animals and the dust and sort of thing and what kind of things you'll encounter at a distance uh, he mentions that too many rewards means your guys are going broke and too many punishments means you're in lots of trouble as as a whole he says be warm but also strong as a leader you know you want your people to be willing to get behind you but you don't want them to think that they're getting behind you because it's easy to fall out of line, you know? So chapter 10, faults of a general come up and those are flight, which is sending somebody to attack somebody that's too large, you know, making them do something they can't handle. So people, they bail on you. Um, uh, insubordination, that's when your your leaders don't have authority really, then collapse. That's when uh, wait, insubordination is, yeah, your leaders are weak and your soldiers are strong and they don't really listen. And then collapse is when you're, your guys are bullying your people basically. They, they're, that's, that's bad then you don't want to bully your people, they, they can't get behind that. Right? And then ruin is basically sabotage. And disorganization is basically laziness or incompetence, sloppiness. Uh, then he talks about different kinds of terrain as being accessible, entangling, temporizing, narrow passes, dangerous heights, and far away from the enemy. The next chapter, the nine situations, is chapter 11, just to make things confusing. And he talks about the nine varieties of ground. Uh, dispersive, which is your home ground, you don't really want to fight there. Facile, which is shallow penetration, you don't want to stop there, you want to keep going. Uh, contentious or ground, which is ground everybody's fighting for, you don't want to attack that ground. You want to get it somehow, but you don't want to necessarily attack it. Open ground, you don't want to block that, that's what everybody can get to. You can't reasonably block it, don't waste your time and efforts trying to block it. Um, intersection ground, make allies, allies reinforce your, your bonds and your relationships and serious ground so deep penetration you want to plunder. That's what you're there for. 
uh, in difficult ground, you want to so like you know like mountains and and swamps and shit. You, you want to keep steady. Don't give up. Keep steady. And in Hendon situations, you want to strategize, and that's the narrow path, narrow grounds. In uh, desperate grounds, you you have to fight. Um, you want to prevent coordination of your enemy and their allies and drive a wedge between them. You want to use desperation as a fight and advantage. You want to be unpredictable and overawe your opponent. Um, chapter 12 is the attack by fire. And he talks about burning soldiers in their encampment. And then you can burn the stores, you can burn the baggage, you can burn the arsenals, you can drop fire in above and uh, talks a bit about how um, how to behave when certain situations of fire break out in the enemy encampment. And then there's a little bit, mentions flooding a little bit. And then uh, the final chapter, chapter 13, the use of spies. He says, don't be cheap to your spies well. Um, there's five types. There's the local, which is like your guides, and then the inward, which is the, the officials, and then the converted, which are the spies that you seek out in your recruit. Everything starts with them. Um, then your doom spies, which are false information, and surviving spies, which is your live feed, basically. And um, he says, yeah, emphasizes being subtle and uh, seek out spies and treat them well and punish leaks. And that that's the that's it. That's the whole thing. The 666 mile high view of the art of war. And there's a lot of shit we don't really isn't really necessary to us, you know. We're not attacking anybody. We're setting a goal. We're trying to think strategically to improve our lives. So what we notice, first of all, is the fundamentals, or no, yeah, the fundamentals, purpose, time, and purpose, time, place, leader, and skill. You know, they, you just rip away most of the words and you look at it as if you're if you're partially blind and you just get that one little piece from it and you get the skeleton so we'll go through that now so you start again or yeah these are read from 12 o'clock or like a clock out to in so we start at the side here not at the top the top's the end so to begin with we have our fundamentals for our goal which is the purpose the time the place the leader and the skill and we'll basically, you know, kind of ask ourselves some questions and write it all down. And we'll have this little bit of information that we didn't necessarily recognize to begin with, but we knew all along. Uh, things we'll compare are competitive. Like sometimes our goals get competitive. Maybe the competition's against yourself. It should always be against yourself, I guess. How you performed before, what, what your best has been. How do you elevate that? But sometimes your goal will be a business or something and we'll literally have competition to deal with. And in that case, we'll compare the, pur the purpose, the leaders, the time and place advantage, the discipline, the strength, the experience, and the mood. Something's changed just a little bit. Uh, then we look at misfortune. That's something that's pretty important, right? No one wastes shit can fuck up on you, and that's ignorance of your environment, ignorance of the situation, misuse of the talent, victory, you know, that's success of the goal, that's important, knowing when to act and when not to act, how to handle big, large, and small goals, uniting your purpose throughout your whole goals, making it all work to one big thing, being prepared, having the capacity and the freedom to complete your goals, some of the faults that people affect people that we'll have to worry about is recklessness, cowardice, haste, honor, and compassion. Some of the faults that if we're in team seven are flight and subordination, collapse, sabotage, and laziness, right? We have different environments of our goals. That's, that's kind of like, you know, maybe you're trying to get into shape. The environment might be your diet and your home 
And so we'll add that in. We'll give ourselves the answer to let us understand what we're doing. Uh, and we'll use this as a framework to figure that out, which is accessible, what's entangling, what's paralyzing, what's narrow, what's high, what's far, and what to target our challenges, rest, storage, resources, tools, people. And then where we get our information from local, from the people around us, from the official narrative, from members actually doing it. What's false information and uh, what's fresh? All right, so we take this basic, this basic thing and then we turn it into questions. And I think I'll read through the questions and uh, I'll see what I can't do for examples is going on as long as it's really necessary, I don't know. So the fundamentals of our become, uh, what is the purpose, cause, or goal? And what, we'll answer this. Um, is right now, now the right time, if not when? Where does the purpose, cause, or goal take place? What am I capable of doing right now? What have I done before that may help me? Then we'll define success. When is the deadline? Or when will success occur? What must be done to achieve the goal? What result does the goal bring? How can I prepare for this challenge? What abilities are needed for the challenge? Information gathering. What do people I know say? What does the, the communal narrative say? What does somebody involved say? What did a liar say? What is being said about it right now? Dangers. And that'll be all the misfortunes, right? What risky opportunities are there? How might fear prevent achievement? What are the aggravating factors? How might reputation protect and act as a, how, how might reputation protection act as a deterrent? How might the issues of others interfere with my goal? What would cause me and or my team to withdraw? What would cause lost faith of in me or my purpose? What does being too aggressive look like? What aspects are vulnerable to sabotage? How might laziness cause the results to suffer? What do I know about the environment? What is unknown? How much do I know or don't know about the situation? What talent is required? And is there any talent I'm not using properly? And then about the competitive environment, so the terrain, will turn into these questions. What places are free for all to compete? Where is it difficult to get in and stay in? Where is there no gain in competing? Where is it difficult to get removed from? Where is it that everyone wants to be? Where is it safe to compete free from domination? Where do I want to keep competition away from? Where is a place I can begin competing in? Where is there a gain to be made? What cannot reasonably be blocked from my competitors? Where can I make alliances? Where can I go to take away from my competition? Where is steady progress essential? Where is my flexibility inhibited? Where must I go on the offense? And then some things I'll want to compare against my challenger. This could be myself or somebody else. And it, like a different aspect of ourself, like our lazy self, our go-getter self, our asshole self, our bitch self, you know. Compared to challenger, whose purpose is more united? Whose leadership is more revered? Who has advantage in time and in place? who is more consistent with their discipline. And I think about that as in uh, your discipline, like wake up every morning, do some push-ups and eat right, like that kind of discipline rather than smack them with a ruler. Uh, who has the most capacity to dominate? Who has the most experience? Who 
smooth mood, it's more focused. And then the challenge that comes from the fire, you'll challenge yourself when you're uh, restful. You'll challenge your backup supplies, your resources, your tools, and your teams. What the fuck? That's silly. You'll challenge yourself when you're at rest. You'll challenge yourself when you're at work. Right? You'll uh, challenge yourself. Um... No, that doesn't make sense. Challenge your, your, yourself at rest. Challenge yourself as an actual challenge. You'll. Uh, That's embarrassing. I thought I had this. Rest, storage, resources, tools, and people. That's what you'll be challenging yourself when you're at rest, when you're at work, the things you have around you, things you can get for the purpose, and then people. I'm gonna have to go with that because this video is really long. It's on my phone. I wanted to do some examples. Let's, let's just try a quick run through of an example. Let's try a quick run through. So, maybe just use the template. Use the template. Say a goal is. Uh, goal is getting in shape. That's your purpose. Your time and place will be sooner and better. Uh, your leader, well, that's that's kind of you unless you get a doctor. What kind of skills you're going to have? You're going to need to know your diet, your exercise. Uh, what are you going to have to compare this to? You're going to have to compare this to your lazy, fat-ass self, right? You're going to have to say, whose purpose is more, more, more advantage? The go-getter self or the the sit and place self, the sugar self. Uh, you'll want to compare which one you like more. Uh, the time and place advantage, um, the discipline, the strength, the experience, and the mood of uh, probably your lazy. If you're challenging yourself that way, then your lazy self is going to have all those advantages. And just writing that out and looking at it and be it, trying to make an effort to change that is is uh, how it gets changed in the first place. Uh, then the misfortune of trying to get in shape is not knowing what uh, my genetics might be, right? Or not knowing if um, the food I'm eating isn't isn't des is designed to keep me fat. And then not misuse, misusing talent. Well, I got the internet. I should be able to figure that shit out. Like, boom, baby. Right? And victory. No, what is it going to take to get into shape? When, knowing when to act and when not to act. Well, that's kind of straightforward. Knowing when to exercise and when not to. How to handle large and small goals of getting shape. So maybe waking up every morning, do some stretches and a slight jog versus trying to hit the gym for four hours every day, right? And then trying to go on an, an all bland diet. Uh, United Purpose, I'm going to have to really want it if I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to have to prepare. I, I, it's a big lifestyle change. It takes like 21 days just to develop a habit, right? So if you want to become something new, you're going to want to prepare a bit. And I'm going to have to have the capacity and freedom to do it, right? If the only thing I can eat every day is chips and pizza, don't exactly have the capacity to do it if that's all I got. Um, so what faults might stand in my way? How, if I'm reckless about trying to lose my weight, well, maybe I'll injure myself or get, uh, get addicted to something or get a surgery and have something go wrong. How might fears stand in my way of being, being too afraid that, I don't know, uh, I'll do something stupid, but in, in better shape, I don't know. 
boy to be afraid of. So I, how might, what are some of the aggravating factors? What might anger me in this? Well, you know, no more fucking ice cream. That's kind of upsetting. Uh, how might the, you know, if I did something like that and took it too much to, to heart kind of thing, uh, I'd be sensitive to slightest fat joke. I don't want that to be a problem. How can uh, that be taken into consideration? Keep that fat picture up. Remind yourself that although you came from there, you still are the, I, you know what? That's probably bad advice. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna, I'll have to look into that sort of thing prepare before I talk about approaches. You know, I don't know, I'm kind of a hard ass on myself at times, so. Uh, how might compassion stop me? Like, if I'm, you know, too, too liberal with my time, I might not take the time to take care of myself. Uh, so what faults might be my fault that might cause me to withdraw from getting into shape um, trying trying to do too much too early um, what might be my fault uh, that causes uh, me not to listen to myself might be um, if I don't make it reasonable you know, just eat fucking rice and beans when I have steak and cheese or something. Uh, what might... So collapse. Collapse. What is collapse? Cause, what would cause loss of faith? What does being too aggressive look like? Taking steroids, getting surgery, and working out 20 hours a day. That's too aggressive. That's super aggressive, hyper aggressive. Uh, so what aspects are valuable as sabotage? Uh, supper time, dessert, TV time, uh, laziness and incompetence. Obviously, that's going to stand in my way every time if you're trying to get into shape. What kind of environments? What's accessible to everybody? Well, the internet, right? Um, where is it difficult to get in and stay in? Probably a gym with a trainer. You know, it costs money. you got to travel to get there. And Where's there no gain in competing? Probably sports. If you've been sitting at the desk for the last three or four years, eating what, eating tasty, maybe not well, but tasty, there, you're, there's no gain in trying to compete in sports. Where is it difficult to get removed from? My mirror, bitch. <laughs> um, no, it, and yeah, okay, maybe. That's a difficult place to get removed from, sort of. You always gotta look in it, so that's something you gotta deal with for that goal in specific. Where is it that everybody wants to be? Everybody wants to be a fucking ninja assassin. All right. Where is it safe to compete from free from domination? Home. Where do I want to keep co competition away from? Um. I don't want to have to have like a dance off or anything like that. Where is there a game to be made? Learning how to dance. What cannot be reasonably blocked from my competitors? Their ability to take care of themselves. Where can I make alliances? Online, a club, I guess you could join a sport. Where can I go to take away from my competition? What an interesting one. <laughs> I don't know if that one really matters. My competition must be my lazy self. Where can I go to take away from my lazy self? I could remove my chair from my office and have a standing desk for an hour a day, I guess. Where is steady progress essential? 
diet. I think all you can do all the exercise in the world, but if you're not eating it right, it's not gonna help. Where's my flexibility inhibited in my goal setting? Uh, finances, I guess, would be one thing. Your access to whatever is around you, your ability to travel. Where must I go on the offense? I gotta start running. Quit smoking, or do another one. So, compared to my lazy self, uh, who is more united? Whose purpose is more united? My best self or my lazy self? Obviously, my best self is. Right? Whose leadership is more revered? Well, I think people want. Everybody wants to meet everybody at their best. They don't want to meet them at their worst, right? Who has the advantage in time and space? My lazy self probably has more momentum. I think so. Who has the most capacity to dominate? Obviously, right now, if that's what the momentum is, obviously that's the thing. But once you get going and you get that that strength and energy back lazy self doesn't have the ability to dominate that that's for sure who has the most experience that's that's tricky i've been off and on my whole life i don't think i'm lazy though it's probably not my lazy self i'm a bit of a, a dick whose mood is more focused uh, i don't know i don't know i'm gonna give the lazy self the benefit of the doubt but I know I want to get in better shape for the videos. It's still early, but I know. And I got to challenge myself in my restful situations. I'm going to have to challenge myself with uh, tools. And I'm going to have to challenge myself with my money. I'm going to have to challenge myself with my environment. And I'm going to need a team. All right, I think I'm going to end it there. That's, yeah. Thank you for your time. Remember, all knowledge is power. Um, and I hope to leave you a little more powerful than you were when you found me. Have a good day. Thank you for your time. Take care.